today I'm going to show you how I approach hand cutting cookie dough in case you don't have a cookie cutter or you don't want to buy a cookie cutter. Here are a couple of things I need. The rolling pin is here to roll out my dough later. You wanna make sure that your dough is cold. It's just way easier to handle and way easier to cut when it's cold. So I have it sitting in the fridge until the very last minute. I have some shipping tape here. I've got my templates. You can use anything you'd like. You can print out pictures, you can print out outlines, whatever you want, you can even draw them. I've got two options when it comes to cutting. Most of us have a paring knife or like a fruit knife at home. What you want is a um, non-serrated blade. And then some people own like a pen blade. What it, this is, it's like, a, kind of like a exacto that you hold onto. The reason why it's called a pen blade is press that to uh, pull the blade back, push down, and you can cut much like the way that you're holding a pencil, so it's ergonomically comfortable. This one is obviously going to be a little bit less comfortable, but it gets the job done, and I worked with a knife for years before I got a pen blade. You're also going to need scissors to help cut your templates out. And then I have some other paper here, parchment, greaseproof paper. This is actually greaseproof paper, not parchment. You can use parchment or you can stick with a plastic wrap that you rolled your dough out in. I'm going to do it on parchment today because it's a little clearer for people to see. Not only that, but if you cut on plastic, you risk getting plastic wrap in your cookie dough. So I like to use parchment if I know I'm going to be hand cutting my dough. So let's get into it. The first step is to prep your templates. This is a normal piece of paper, not cardstock, anything like that. You can, of course, use cardstock. It'll give you a much more robust template that you can use over and over again. Now this next step is not required, but I prefer it because it prevents the butter from the cookies leaching onto your cookies is to tape both sides of your template with shipping tape. That's just kind of like laminating it. It extends the life of your template. Again, not required, but nice. And you can also print this on cardstock, but not absolutely required. So I am going to tape up our template. And I'm going to tape it up on both sides. Won't be a deal breaker, but it's nice to not have any indentations in the surface of your cookie. One more piece and then we should be good. All right, now we're going to cut out our shapes. I like to use very sharp fabric scissors. It just allows me to get into those grooves way easier. Doing my rough cut first. Take your time cutting out your templates. I'm not being super perfect today, but the more perfect your templates, the better your shapes will be. And I'm doing a variety of complexities just so that you can see how it differs. This one is a snowman. It's got more curves in it and the technique will just take some time and practice to get down as far as trying to hand cut. So as a rule of thumb for myself, if I know I'm gonna be making over two to three dozen of the same shape, I go ahead and invest in that cookie cutter mainly because hand cutting takes a really long time. 
but if you know you won't be getting that cookie cutter or you know you're only going to do a few or it's a very seasonal thing and you don't mind spending the time go ahead and hand cut you can do any shape that you desire here we go our templates are ready for use Keep this in mind, we definitely want our cookie dough to be as cold as possible because it's just way easier to cut that way. So if you need to work with a small amount of dough at any one time, don't be shy to do that. And again, I'm getting out my um, greaseproof paper. I'm also going to get my baking tray out, my rolling pin at the ready. and my cutting tools. I'm gonna to show you how I cut with both of these guys. All right, so here is our cold dough out of the fridge. It feels like slices of cold cheese. And I'm, I told you before that I normally do my dough between pieces of plastic, but for today, because we're cutting them and I don't want the plastic to get in the dough, we're going to transfer this to our grease-proof paper to work with. And I'm just gonna give it a nice roll so that it's nice and even and to the right width. That looks good. Yeah, looks good. Look at how nice and smooth and cold. Don't be shy to kind of put this back in the fridge occasionally to keep it cold. So here is how we hand cut. I like to press the template into the surface of the cookie. And I'm going to show you with what we all have in our house first. You're, you're mainly not dragging. You're mainly kind of poking the dough. That way, if you're not accidentally pulling the dough with you, it just depends on how cold your dough is. Sometimes it's a little more forgiving to that when it's very cold, but the second it starts to warm up, it, the rest of the dough is gonna start pulling with it. So we kind of move in an up and down cutting motion and with the inside of the blade pressed right up against the template, you can drag if your dough is cold. Again, you'll see it start to kind of pull in on itself if your dough is not cold. I've got my hand on the template and I'm dragging and you can, you'll can you feel the resistance. So I'm gonna cut this off and see what that looks like on the side. You'll feel resistance once it starts warming up. Pull and press up and down as, as you feel like you need to adjust. We'll come back to these little curved areas later. You can tell I'm using a combination of motions to get around the outline. And I like to cut away like the small edges so they're not in the way. I get my hand under to kind of push it up and it'll you'll kind of grab your template and you can see there are some jagged edges. And that's a combination of pulling and sometimes your up and down motion is just not perfect. You can use your fingers to gently press in your dough. Again, this is just way easier when your dough is cool. And you can transfer them directly to your um, baking sheet at this point. But if you've got, for example, some corners that aren't perfect, I take the dull side of my knife and I just press it in a little to smooth it out and adjust that way. You can also use the side of a spoon. All right, so I'm going to transfer this guy over here. And that's how you cut with a kitchen knife. And if you want to use a pen blade, the idea is the same. Press your template into your dough and holding it low. Don't hold it up here because when you apply pressure, it's gonna snap that blade back up. 
you're going to do the same thing. With the pen blade, it's a little bit easier to drag. It's definitely designed more for cutting like this. Just to make sure that you cut all the way through your dough. And don't be afraid to change your angle if you have to. So having a pen blade is definitely a little easier than just using a paring knife. I'm gonna do the same thing where I just grab the sides so it's not in my way. And these corners are still not gonna be perfect. So once we cut it out, we're gonna have to fix them. All right. Hand down here to push your dough up. You can tell the corners are not perfect. We're gonna use our fingers and our tools to slightly adjust our shapes. And you can tell, oh my God, you can tell how it's slightly not perfect. But once it bakes up, you're gonna barely be able to tell. Transfer this directly onto your baking sheet again. Then we're going to do another one so you can see what the shape looks like. And I like to use up as much of the dough space as possible. So I like to move from the edges in, keeping as little distance between each cookie as possible. And I'm going to go back to my knife so you can see how I cut. It's a combination of the dragging as well as the up and down. Make sure you get all the way down to the bottom to cut all the way through your dough. And my dough is starting to warm up. I definitely feel a little more resistance. And don't be afraid to change up the angle or direction of your cuts so that they work for you. Let's cut that out of the way. Get that out of the way. Get my hand underneath. You can tell as the dough warms up, it gets more rough around the edges. So you can go and gently press it down. Use your hands to adjust the shape. And a lot of these little imperfections are gonna go away as you bake your dough. So if you feel like there's not enough of an indent there, use the back of your knife. Use the back of your knife to smooth out some edges. Just like that. So we just finished baking our cookies and I wanna show you the difference between the ones that we've hand cut versus something where we used a cookie cutter. So these ball shapes are done with cookie cutters. These are 3D printed cookie cutters. And you can see how this maple leaf is pretty, pretty detailed, you know. For something like this, it'd be really, really hard and take forever to hand cut. So if you know you want a cutter or a shape cookie like this, buy the cutter. For all of our other shapes, we've got our snow globe, snowman, and mitten. The main difference is definitely in that outer edge. Because we're cutting like this, you're not getting that smooth edge that you get when you use a cookie cutter. With the cookie cutter, our motion is straight up and down. 
but with hand cut or dragging it, and there is a slight evidence of that. You can kind of see it on the side of the cookie. It might not be 100% smooth every time after you've decorated it and dressed it up. For the most part, no one's going to notice, but that's something to keep in mind. If it bothers you, you might want to get a cookie cutter. But that's it. This is how we hand cut using homemade templates. Hopefully that has helped you. If you have any other questions, definitely leave them for us in the, dis uh, in the comment section below. And check us out at borderlandsbakery.com. See you next time. Ha <laughs> ha!